morning. Welcome back to my channel. This is your girl, Miss Tiffany Roundtree, and I am back with another video. Yes, I am back with another video. I am working on my consistency, which is one of my um, advice that I have said in my last previous video on five tips on successful life. If you would like to watch that video, I will have it up here in the video. You just click on that link and go enjoy that video, and I hope it be a blessing to you. In this video, I will be sharing some experiences and tips to help young mothers, new mothers, single fathers, grandparents that are raising their grandkids, giving them advice and tips to help them on their journey on raising the children. But before we get into this video, be sure that you like and share this video. Do not forget to subscribe because I am trying to build a wonderful, beautiful community on this channel. And not only that, be sure that you press that notification bell so you will be notified when I have a new upload. I want to go ahead and let you know this, that this video is not intended in no way, shape, form, or fashion to tell you what to do with your kids. Also, in this video, um... We will not be bashing people who decide to do either or when raising their kids. It is different strokes for different folks. We will not be bashing anyone who decide to do things versus the other. People have different kids. Not all the kids are the same. Not all, like just like pregnancy, not all pregnancy is the same. Not all kids are the same. So one thing might work for one child, the next thing might work for the other child. So do not bash other parents who decide to do something contrary to what you did you can give advice you can give sound advice but do not bash this is a, a positive community we plan on we, uh, we got enough things going on in the world now and parents fighting other parents is not the way to go during this time we're going to be positive people in this community and we're just going to learn love and help one another okay so let's go ahead and get the elephant out of the room the first thing i will want to talk about is co-sleeping and sleep training now, cold sleeping is when you decide to sleep with your baby versus sleep training when you take your baby and lay him or her in the bed fully awake in hopes that she, she or he falls to sleep without no cuddling, no swinging, no nothing like that. Uh, to me, I pretty much cold slept, but I really didn't sleep train as well. So my baby, I cold slept and they slept in their own bed as well, but I rocked my baby to sleep. Some parents decide not to walk their best. They were to sleep. They were to train their baby to fall asleep on their own. Me, on the contrary, I did not do that. I rock my baby to sleep every time. And co-sleep, I co-slept sometimes. Um, I didn't. I do not recommend you co-sleeping with your baby at newborn age, one, two, three months old. No, that's not. That's not gonna work. Cause there's a big possibility that you will roll over on your baby. And then around that time, they're not aware of letting you know, hey, you on top of me. And stuff. And they're not at the age of letting you know that you are on top of them. So I do not recommend you co-sleeping with your baby at a very young age. Now, uh, if you do not know, I am a mother of two, two beautiful girls, both eight and five. And both pregnancies were different, and both upbringings were different. You know, I had the same morals with them, but the different they had two different experiences. Now with Kamora, I worked a lot. With Kylie, I did. So with Ky with Kamora, um, I went through a very traumatic experience. I almost died having her, and so that. So I coached up. I felt like. Uh, I felt so complete when I had my baby with me. That's why I do not bash parents that co-sleep with their baby because you never know what's going on with them. They may have had traumatic experiences to bring their kids here and they probably the only thing they have left and for them to feel complete and safe, they co-sleep with their children. And not saying that they co-sleep all the time, but they feel better if their baby is near them, which I do totally understand because like, this world is like crazy and Bringing babies into this world is already a big thing already. Some people are slashed open. Some people are ripped, pushing the baby out. Some people even died bringing their baby. Some people are on the brink of death bringing their baby. So I would not dare uh, bash anyone who decide to co-sleep with their baby. And I would not... Uh, I will not bash anyone at 12 who decided to sleep train their baby. The choice is yours, but the pros and cons of of the pros and cons of co-sleeping is a better bond with your baby um, and stuff like that. You get a better bond, you get to know your baby, your baby get to know you, but the 
um, the bad thing about it, it is a possibility that you may roll over on your baby. So when I co-slept, I made sure I was on one side and baby was on way on the other side. Because most times I was in the bed by myself or Kev was in the bed by himself due to our work schedule. So neither one parent was always gone. So we were able to do that. So if you decide to co-sleep, that's totally fine. I don't recommend that young ba at a young age where they cannot tell you, hey, you're rolling over me or whatever this and that. So be extremely careful if you co-sleep. If you decide to sleep train, that's fine as well. I can't really say much on sleep training because I did not do it. I did not just lay my baby in bed and let them fall asleep. So I always rocked and cradled my baby before I put them to sleep. But either way, you do what's best for you. Okay? So... That's my tip or that's my view on co-sleeping and sleep training. My next thing I will want to talk about are bottles. Bottles, 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 bottles. You need those bottles when you have those babies. But the thing about I have learned when it comes down to those bottles, babies are very picky. Like when I was my two kids, they decided to drink out of two different bottles. My oldest one, she sucked out whatever bottle that you gave her. But, but it had to say it had like a certain nipple or whatever this and that. But my youngest one, she only wanted to suck out a Dr. Brown bottle. That's just what it is. It is what it is. So your baby, you have to get in tune of what your baby would like to have. Some people like the uh, event bottle. I don't know how to say it, the event bottle. Some people like the Dr. Brown. You know, we try to pick what we want for our kids sometimes. But, um... A lot of babies don't like nipples that are fat. Some people, babies like the nipples that are kind of small. Some people like the um the bottle that have like the nipple with the little flat bottom or whatever this and that. It just depends on your baby. So you just, I just suggest you that you just listen to your baby, see what does better with the gas. You know, some bottles help with gas. Some nipples help with gas. You got bottles with different flows. Some babies like um, bigger flows. Some babies like slow flows. It's just different. You just have to pretty much just stay in tune with your baby and just know that um, our babies just don't like the same thing. So like my baby, with Kimora, she liked to bottle with um, slow flows, and Kyla, she liked to bottle with fast flows, and they just were totally different. She just wanted Dr. Brown bottles, and Kimora, she just sucked whatever bottle it was, just had to have a certain nipple that she wanted. So, you just, you have to learn the things about your baby, and if you do that, and you stay in tune with your baby, and watch out the things that, that he or she likes, hey, you good. So, that's just my tip, or that's just my experiences with the bottles. The next thing I want to talk about are pacifiers. Pacifiers. Now, it's a lot of, I don't know what to say. It's a lot of talk about pacifiers. People don't like, some people don't like them. Some people say it's just a terrible thing to have pacifiers. I don't know. Personally, I didn't experience much with pacifiers, especially with my oldest child. She really did not suck on pacifiers. Some babies like pacifiers, some babies do. But my oldest one, she did not like pacifiers. When she did suck on a pacifier, she was at four months and she sucked on it for two weeks. I don't know. Some reason she just wanted pacifiers around that time. That after two weeks of love, she like that was it. But on the other hand, my youngest one, she loved pacifiers. She stayed on pacifiers. And I suggest you just use your pacifier as a soother. Don't just put it in their mouth just to, uh, it's just my experience now. I don't think you should just put it in their mouth just to have it in all day. I think you should just use it as to help put them to sleep or something like that. But some babies just like to suck on them. You know, it is what it is. You know what's best for your child. I cannot tell you what, what to do with your child. But, you know, from experience, from my experience, I think you should just give your baby pacifiers as a soother for them to go to sleep. Because with Kylie, my young one, the five-year-old, she sucked on pacifiers left and right, and she felt like she could not live without them. And also, the pacifier keeps your baby from talking. Especially if you keep it in their mouth all the time. I think after one, you should just drop it. But, you know, like I said, it's different situations on why some people keep their baby on pacifiers. So I cannot tell you, but from my experience, I think after one year old, you should just drop it. Um, Cause around that time they start to get their um, their sounds and their talking and everything else out. They start to grow in that. And so some babies they do not talk unless you take the pacifier out. So 
just be extremely careful when it's come down to the pacifiers because it just pretty much blocks them for trying to communicate most time they'll just scream or they'll just point but to encourage the talking just start taking the pacifier out more during the daytime and just give it to them at night because uh it can come with some bad side effect. Not on that, when they start growing teeth, it'll start bulging their teeth out. So watch out for that as well. You know, even though they have different size pacifiers for um, different ages, so make sure that you look at the top right hand corner, it'll tell you what age certain pacifier for. They even have pacifier up to two years old. So it's up to your child. You know, I can't tell you what to do with your children when it comes down to pacify you just do what's best for you but for me I had to, when my youngest one dropped her pacifier in the store I didn't give her anymore and ever since then she been talking because she would not talk unless I took the pacifier out so that's just my experience with that you can do what you want to do with your babies you know do what's best for you because some people they have babies that have special needs and they need their pacifier and that's totally fine some baby they just can't go without and that's totally fine as well but from my experience I think at one year old you should just take it out next thing I would like to talk about are baby bags you will need a baby bag I don't see how some parents do not go do not go with baby bags you would need a baby bag you would need something to take with you when you take your child out and also with a baby bag make sure that you have like an extra like emergency bag in your vehicle just in case you like you're in a rush and you forget your baby bag you have an extra in the um in the car and your baby bag baby bag should include like the bottles the milk or breast milk whatever you have which you cannot do that you cannot leave your breast milk in the car no don't do that but you should have bottles your medicine like Tylenol uh, the Motrin, that was, that's, these are things I had in my bag, like the Tylenol, the Motrin, uh, extra bottled water, uh, bottles, the milk, uh, change of clothes, what it is, rash cream, I use baby powder on my baby, make sure you use the tap free baby powder if you do do that to keep them dry and keep them smelling good, uh, what else did I use, I had the pacifiers, I had, uh, extra clothes, Oh, it's been so long, y'all. My baby, my baby's about to be six, so I can't about remember this stuff. But um, I did have those type of things in there. I made sure I had an extra toy, just in case we on a long road and you know they get bored and stuff like that. But make sure you keep something to keep them busy as well. But also make sure you always have a baby bag for your baby because you will never know. Make sure you keep your Tylenol, your gripe water, all that stuff in the baby bag. Cause you can be out on vacation and your baby's not feeling good. Your baby ain't not having teething on symptoms with a fever and stuff, and you do not have your Tylenol, you will be stuck. You will like be in such a total, total bad situation. So make sure that you keep those type of things inside a baby bag, and make sure you, most importantly, keep a baby bag for your baby. You will need it. And speaking of baby bags, even though my kids are eight. And five I have these right here I have these for my kids I have these bags this is Kylie's bag this is Gamora bag I let them pick out their own bag in these bags since they're older and if they're going with someone out of town or they ride with someone I make sure they have their own little bag they make I made them let them pick out their own little cute bag that, that fix them and in these bags are toiletries like um hand sanitizer, you got hand wipes, let me make sure, I can't remember, yeah, so I had like, flushable wipes in here, uh, this is a Kimura bag as well, and they have a change of clothes, they have a change of clothes in here, just in case like if they out to eat and they mess up their clothes, they'll have something there, they have their umbrella, just in case, uh, I have, I haven't been in these bags in so long. There's some um, antibacterial wet wipes. Uh, let's see what's in here. They stay in these bags half the deal, so. They had Kleenex in here. I think more took those out. Let's see what's in college.
Oh, also too, I make sure they have like a little small wallet with a couple of dollars in here, just in case they go somewhere and they want something or whatever this net with somebody. And I try to teach them how to uh, manage money, but I can't find the Kleenex. They had Kleenex in here, but I have Kleenex and they have wet wipes, they have toilet, um, what it is, flushable wipes. I make sure they had it because they're girls and I try to teach them on um, keeping themselves clean. And in these bathrooms, you don't know what's going on. Sometimes you be in the bathroom and there's no tissue. So I make sure they have changed clothes. I make sure they have the uh, flushable wipes and the wet wipes and the um, their umbrellas and their um, hand sanitizer and um, the Kleenex. Pretty much it's on hand for them when they go out like we like last year i let them have it for when we went to the fair and the fair bathroom was terrible and didn't have no any tissue so that came they came on time when i took them out make sure you keep your baby bags and when your children get older find them like little small bags right like this to keep with them just in case just in case because you never know what happened even though kamora's eight and i still get her a bag with changing clothes and stuff that she would need because you never know what would happen or she might get sick or she might end up with a stomach virus or she might be out and something else in her stomach she might mess up her clothes she should have a separate um, thing of clothes right here in her bag that would be accessible for her so that's my next, my next experience is baby bags make sure you keep baby bags keep all the necessary items in there like the Tylenol Motrin all that there in there rash cream put all of that you could never have too much stuff because you just never know my next thing i want to talk about is walkers and swings me personally walkers are a waste of money reason being because babies learn to walk on their own they crawl around and they pull up on sofa chairs they pull up on tables and it's pretty much they call it on uh, cruising they cruise against the bed they cruise against the chairs and they cruise against the table so I just rather just like hey I just rather just let them learn on their own walkers to me I just think it's a waste of money because they only be in for a couple of months and that's it just try to find a way to sell it so to save money just let your baby crawl on the floor give it belly time all that let them let him or her pull up on tables pull up on cabinets whatever anything to get the strength in their legs on their own I don't I me mean, personally I don't think walkers work like like I said, it's different from different parents, but to me, walkers do not work. Now, with swings, I, I had a swing once, but my baby's never stayed in. If you want a swing, get a swing. Me, personally, I don't think swings even work. Not for me, because I just feel, I just feel better rocking my baby, laying her down, or let him on the floor in a, a certain area, let him play, like block off a certain area, or put him in a pack and play, or whatever it is, and let him play. For swings, I just, I, it's, it's up in the air. If you want to swing, get a swing. If you don't, don't get a swing. And I can't really say much on swings. I really didn't have it, but to me, it just a waste of money. I didn't use it. The only thing I can say about the swing, I didn't use it. Now, I did use bouncers. I did use a bouncer, the little chairs that they get to sit in and bounce. Then they work. I like those. I did use bouncers, but I didn't use swings. So, it's up in the air about the, about the um, swings, but I did not use a walker. Walkers did not work. I felt like it was a waste of money. I just didn't get it. But if you choose to get it, get it. But to me, I just didn't get it. So the next three things, I'm going to put it all in the same collection, is crib, bassinets, and packing plates. Now, um, I'm going to tell you, bassinets, I really, I use the bassinet. But to me, I don't think they're really beneficial because the baby grew out it extremely fast. That's the only down thing about bassinet. They grew out extremely fast. Because the way the baby are uh, rapidly growing these days, bassinet is just like, just a waste of money because they don't stay in the long cup. Both of my kids, they grew fast. And like within a month or two, they were out of them. So I don't think bassinet, to me, you some people like bassinets. They're really good like when you are trying to sleep train and you put them with your baby beside you. Instead of co-sleeping, you can put them right there beside you. And they also got the, the 
the fastener you can hook on the side of your bed to have those too as well if you want to somewhat co-sleep but not co-sleep you can use bassinet and this baby just right there just turn over get the baby you know do what you got to do put the baby right back there so the baby's there so bassinet they kind of like a hit or miss to me i didn't uh after i think i used with both babies but but both of them was a gift so i really didn't buy it that was a gift so i used them because they were a gift i didn't want nobody raising their money so i used it but either way it's just like a hit or miss because after so many months they just grow out of it so if you want a best net get a best net they got some very beautiful ones the all white ones and green ones whichever one they good to help accent a room but I don't think that you should just use them because they don't last long. Now, pack and play, you got the best of both worlds. You got a crib and you got a playpen. Some people go pack and play. I like pack and play because you pretty much use it long term. You can use it or you can pretty much, they got like a, pack and play had like a bassinet part, but you can also, when they get older, put it down at the bottom. Um, Put it down at the bottom for them to play in when they get older. So if you don't want to use a crib right now, you can just buy a pack and play and put your baby in the bassinet section. And then as they get older, you can just get rid of the bassinet section and put the mat at the bottom for them to play in. Now I do think that pack and play are worth your while because you pretty much you can keep it for a stand a long time. Cause you can keep your you can keep your baby in the bassinet part until they get to the age of like sitting up or something like that or being able to move you know but you're not totally losing out on money because you can use it later for them to play in later so i think i think you should get a pack of play like when you get ready to do things around the house you can sit the baby in the middle of the living room they can play in there watch television or whatever it is that or learning programs whichever one you can do that um I think pack and plays all worth your money. So I like pack and plays. You know, many people don't, but I like pack and plays. Now as far as cribs, I never had a crib. The one that I never did, I never had a crib. And if you do decide to get a crib, get the cribs that will transform into into a bigger bed. They have a what made by Graco, a three in one on crib that pretty much transform to a bigger bed. I think those are the best ones to get because after a while the cribs you just end up getting rid of it. And so I just suggest you to get cribs that turn into a bed after because you get to keep it for a long time. At least up to the toddler years or they some will turn to full size beds, like a full size bed. So I think you should get go get those get the three in one. Uh, I think I think they're three in one. I think they're made by Graco. Get those type of beds, and I think those will work better. Like just a regular standard crib. You like after so many months, you have to try to find a way to sell it. I don't think it's worth it. This is me just trying to think of a way to save some money. Cause like pack and play, you can pretty much transform it to some, transform it to something else. But um. The cribs you can transform them to if you get the three in one. So if you decide to go get cribs, get the three in one. Like I said, I think it's made by Graco. I don't any I don't know any other brand that does it. I don't know. But from my experience, you know, from what I've seen from other people with cribs, get the one that turn turns it to a full bed later. So it's up to you. You can either choose to get bassinet, cribs, or pack and play. But I do suggest you to get pack and play or a crib that turns to a full size bed okay let's talk about the big thing tv time tv time um me personally i think i suggest you cut it down to like especially when young like two hours a day i know it sounds bad but cut it down to two hours a day and i'm saying this even when they get up like seven eight years old because it's the only thing they will want to do play game play games watch television and it, I think it pretty much deteriorates their learning. Everything they learn, I think it goes out the window because they constantly stuck in that type of stuff. I think you should cut down screen time to two hours until they're able and old enough to understand that, like, hey, I don't need to be in this all the time. Um, until they're old enough to know how to balance the, the media time and pretty much homework and stuff like that. So I think from experience, 
to just give them at least two hours, that whether it's playing games or watching television or whatever, it's not, you know, it's different with, like, learning materials, but, like, as sitting down watching TV shows or something like that, give them about two hours. And I think that there's plenty of time to have a little enjoyment and to keep their minds active on other things. I hope you all enjoyed this video. This is my experience with kids. Uh, me having two kids. I know I probably could give up much because, you know, in this time, you have so much different things like the bottle makers. Like, you got this machine that pretty much makes the bottle for you. When I was growing up, they didn't have that. Uh, when I had my kids, they didn't have that. So, I can't really give too much on the parenting thing because right now, in this, this time, parents were spoiled. We didn't have it. We had to work. We had to work with our children. So, I don't know. But either way, I hope it was a uh, help to you. I hope that it was beneficial to you. Like, it's hard to try to do this video because it's been a minute. Like, my kids are pretty much grown in my eyes. It's been a minute since I had newborns and stuff like that. Even though I have a nephew that's about to be two, it's still totally different to have your own child. So, But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, make sure that you share this video. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want me to talk about anything, make sure that you put it in the comment section down below. And until next time, y'all, I hope you all have a wonderful, blessed day. And be the best version of yourselves. See you later, guys. Thank you.